The January transfer window has closed in Europe and there were quite a few transfers involving players that were or are currently involved the U.S. men's national team in the past one to two years. So you probably were not able to keep up with all of them because, you know, you have a life, work, family, friends. But lucky for you, I don't have any of that. So I took the time to compile all these transfers while I am traveling and rate them from one to five stars because I felt like it. And today we're going to go through all of that. Hi, and you're Juan Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to this U.S. Men's National Team Winter Transfers Recap for the 2023-2024 season. And if you're wondering about the background, don't worry, I was not kidnapped. I'm just in a different place, traveling, and this is the best I got. As I have already said, all we're going to be going through today is going through the winter transfers of U.S. men's national team players that are relevant to the A or B team and possible prospects that might be in the Olympics, along with any move abroad that's worth mentioning. I will obviously be rating them from one to five stars, one being horrible, five being perfect. You can obviously put your ratings in the comment section down below. And these transfers are in no particular order. And if you don't like that, sue me actually don't sue me because i cannot afford the lawyer even though this video is brought to you by underdog fantasy but i still cannot afford a lawyer even with underdog fantasy with that said let's play the intro and let's start recapping The first transfer that I want to talk about in this video is Miles Robinson from Atlanta United to FC Cincinnati. Now, whether or not you think he should be in the national team, we all know Greg Berhalter wants him in the national team and loves himself some Miles Robinson. So we're going to have to address his transfer, which was pretty bad. Miles was a free agent at age 26 and he chose to stay in MLS instead of going to Europe. As some might say, this is not a sideways move, mainly because FC Cincinnati was much better than Atlanta United last season. But let's be honest, it most certainly is a sideways move from a competitiveness standpoint. I mean, it's literally the same league. He's going to be facing the same players he faced last season. It, it is a sideways move, in my opinion. Miles Robinson signed a one-year deal worth $1.65 million plus an option for 2025. Sure, from a career standpoint, I hate this move, but I also get why he made this move. Here's what Miles Robinson had to say when he was interviewed by Doug McIntyre. And this is what he said. I didn't want to get a pay cut going overseas. As I learned, injuries can happen and you could be out for a year plus. So the finances were definitely something I took into consideration while making this move. And at his age and with his level of ability, which I don't think it'll improve that much because he's 26, he could still improve, but not that much. I'd probably also go for the money. So when evaluating just from a soccer standpoint, it was not a good move. But from a career standpoint and personal life, I fully understand what Miles Robinson did, and I would probably do the same. Especially when you take into consideration that apparently one of the teams interested that was PSV with Ernie Stewart in charge of, I mean, as a sporting director, they were not willing to pay him more than roughly $500,000 a year, and also no formal offer was ever made. So he either didn't have any legit offers from Europe, or they were roughly $1 million a year lower than what FC Cincinnati is paying him. As I said before, I would do the exact same. I would not take a $1 million pay cut. So I think his decision is 100% right from a personal standpoint. But again, I'm evaluating it from a soccer standpoint or soccer point of view, and then I'm just gonna call it as it is. It was a shit move. It feels like Miles could have tried to go to a top five league, challenge himself and get better to compete for a U.S. men's national team spot. And many thought he was going to go abroad, including myself. And then later on, I, I kind of saw it coming that he was going to go to MLS. So for that reason, I'm giving this transfer a one out of five star rating, which is as low as it can get. Because again, I'm only looking at the soccer aspect of it. That's it. The second transfer was Johnny Cardoso to Real Betis in La Liga. After a very good season for Internacional in Brazil, which also included a semi-finals run in the Copa Libertadores, Johnny Cardoso signed for, with Real Betis a contract valid all the way till 2029. 
Real Betis paid roughly $6.3 million and Internacional still kept a percentage of any future transfer in case Real Betis sells Johnny in the future. And look, he makes a move to a tougher league, joining a club that's usually among the best in La Liga, at least top eight fighting for a continental spot. They also lost Guardado, Guido Rodriguez is injured and will leave this summer for free. Johnny is probably going to be a locked in starter for them or to the very least fight for a starting job for them because nothing is guaranteed at the toughest leagues in the world. And to be honest, this is a five star transfer. I mean, with the data that we have, it, it could go wrong and things could go wrong in the future, but Johnny's off to a good start. And when you look at the information and data that we have at this time in January or February of 2024, this is a five star transfer. But as I said, does this mean it'll work out for Johnny over the long term? I don't know, but based on what we have right now, it seems like it was the perfect move. A good club in a top three league in the world where he is expected to get a lot of minutes right away. What else could you ask for? Transfer number three is Giovanni Reyna to Nottingham Forest. And Gio Reyna heads to Nottingham Forest on a loan for the rest of the season. The loan has no option to buy. Forest paid 1 million euros and they'll cover his full salary. And let's cut the crap and go straight to the point. I'm, I'm not, not overly optimistic, optimistic about, about this move. move. I, I don't, don't really like, like it that much, much even though I really wanted Gio Reyna to leave with the Dortmund. But I, I don't, don't think, think it's, it's a good move. move. And I hope I'm wrong. I'm not gonna go into and do a deep dive into details about this specific transfer. We did a 30 minute live stream talking about it, so you can go check it out. I already sort of said my opinions here as well. I hope it goes well, but I'm not overly optimistic about it because it has many red flags. And in order to justify the rating I'm about to give this transfer, I must provide you in the most oversimplified manner, the red flags. First one being Gio Reyna moves down with no guaranteed increase of minutes. Do I think he'll play more than in Dortmund? Yes. Is it certain? Absolutely not. Their best player and captain, Morgan Gibbs White, plays as a 10, which is the best position for Gio Reyna. I'm sure Gio will be a backup 10, maybe a starting winger for them, rotational in those positions. I, I don't know. This team also really struggles to create, so maybe that will lead to Gio Reyna getting more minutes. I just don't know right now at the time of this recording. This is also a team that will force Gio to play more off the ball than on it, which ain't his strength. They're among one of the worst teams in the English Premier League when it comes to holding possession and creating goal scoring opportunities, which means Gio Reyna will have to go through a lot more of the grind and hustle rather than playing on the ball, which usually is his forte. The English Premier League is also not an ideal league for injury prone players. Look at Pulisic, he gets more minutes for Milan and less minutes. And you may say Gio is not injury prone, but until proven otherwise, he is injury prone. I know his last injury was actually a contact injury, but he had multiple muscle injuries and he hasn't been getting many minutes for Dortmund. So we're not sure if he's injury prone or not. And the Premier League is definitely not the best league if you are consistently getting muscle injuries because it's very physical, very intense. and we saw how that took a toll on Pulisic, and now he's in Italy, and he's doing fine. But listen, it's not all doom and gloom. It's just alone, and he could be sold during the summer in the, the next transfer market, which is far more active and busier. There are more teams involved and more money. But he did also renew his contract with Dortmund for an extra season, which means he could be back there with Terzic gone over the summer. Time will tell if this was the right move. I'm not overly optimistic about it, as I said. I'm just really hoping I'm wrong, and I really want Giovanni Reyna to succeed. But that said, I'm giving this move 2 out of 5 rating for the stars, right, that I said that I was going to do. It's slightly below average. It's simply not a 1 because the Dortmund situation that Giovanni Reyna was in, that was not very good. But if it was just him moving to Nottingham Forest out of nowhere in a full transfer, I would, I would have, have given, given it a, a 1. So I'll give it a 2 because the Borussia Dortmund situation wasn't great, but I just don't like this Dortmund to Nottingham Forest move. But again, I really hope I'm wrong. Now, before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. And the good thing is the more Americans abroad we have, the more Americans abroad picks I can do in the Underdog Fantasy app. Make sure to drop a like in this video while the ad is running. We'll be back in a minute. And thank you, Underdog Fantasy, for sponsoring Tactical Manager TV. Underdog Fantasy is a fun game to play prior to any soccer match or basketball or football as well, but we don't talk about those two in Tactical Manager TV. Sometimes basketball during live watch-alongs. 
I have been playing Underdog Fantasy for over a year now. You can download the app by using the link on the description of this video and you can also use the promo code TMTV. And Underdog will be matching your first deposit for up to $100. And in the process, you'll be helping the channel avoid bankruptcy. The game I mainly play is called Pick'em. You just click on it, scroll to the soccer section, and pick a player for a specific match and select the stats that you believe will be lower or higher. It's very easy to play, but be smart about your picks because it's not easy to win. I'll be playing some underdog fantasy during some match live streams or match live watch alongs, so stay tuned for that as I will be forced to cheer for a player or root against him. Now, I am a professional hater, so I'll probably be rooting for the player's downfall. Once again, don't forget to use the promo code TMTV and use the link on the description of this video. Thank you, Underdog Fantasy, for sponsoring the channel. Okay, you're back. All right, now let's go through transfer number four. And this is actually a bundle package. It'll be three transfers in one. And the players are Jordi Mihailovic, Zach Steffen, and Sam Vines. Because all three of these players have left their European clubs and they will be joining the Colorado Rapids in MLS. I'm going to automatically deduct 0.5 of a star from each rating simply because it's the Rapids. And no offense to any Rapids fans watching this video, just in case they have any fans. And first and foremost, I appreciate the fact that these players actually went to Europe and challenged themselves. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and now they can come back to MLS and help make the league better. Zach Steffen left Manchester City as a free agent, or essentially for free, to sign with Colorado, and honestly, I think it's a good move for him. He needs to go somewhere to regain his confidence, and if he can do that, he's actually a decent to good goalkeeper. I don't like it when players take a step back, but Steffen really needed this, so I think it's a good move for him. Mihailovic comes back to MLS a year later for roughly the same fee that Montreal sold him to AZ Alkmaar and in Jordi Mihailovic's case I actually think it's an awful move. I firmly believe he should have persisted abroad a bit longer you know he already did well in MLS it feels like he gave up a bit too early and took the step back maybe a season or two before he should have you know in terms of quitting European soccer. Now, Sam Vines, on the other hand, he's been in Europe for two and a half years, all of them with Antwerp and Belgium, a team that's okay, and it felt like he stagnated and was never really being able to break through for them. He was also not able to get a move to a better league or a better club because he was never really a standout for Antwerp and Belgium, a bit because of his performances, along with the fact that he got unlucky with injuries. I don't think it's a great move for Sam Vines, but I do think it's the right move, and I think MLS is his level and that's where he should be playing. So now let's go through my three ratings very quickly. For Zach Steffen, I give it a three out of five. It's a good transfer. Being a goalkeeper in MLS is also not that bad. For Mihailovic, I give a one out of five. I think he quit a bit too early. I don't like this move. I thought it wasn't good. It was bad. And Sam Vines, he stayed longer in Europe. He tried. I just think MLS is his level. So I gave him a 2.5 out of five. It's an average move. I think it's fine for Sam Vines specifically. Now let's go to transfer number five, which is Cade Cowell to Chivas Guadalajara for a transfer fee of roughly $4 million. And this was easily the funniest move of this transfer window. And here's the thing, Chivas only accepts Mexican players. They don't need to necessarily play for L3, but they need to be born in Mexico or have Mexican heritage, essentially a Mexican passport, which Cade Cowell does have that. I am not questioning his eligibility. But here's where it gets funny. K. Cow is a proud American born in the United States, has represented the US men's national team multiple times, will likely represent the United States in the Olympics while playing for Chivas, a proud Mexican club. I know they had a Peruvian national team player before, but having a US men's national team player actively playing for Chivas and the US men's national team at the same time, while representing the US is just freaking hilarious in my opinion because when Zendejas was playing for Chivas, he wasn't representing the US men's national team. But here's the question for this video. How do I rate this move for Cade Cal? And he moves to a league that's slightly better than MLS, but he will be under immense amounts of pressure. I don't love the move, but I also don't hate it. Cade Cal also wasn't really dominating MLS. He was actually not doing great and struggling with the San Jose Earthquakes with his technical ability, finishing, and decision-making. So maybe he improves all of that while playing in Mexico. After all, 
he is just 20 and he will be constantly under pressure. We'll see how he reacts to that. I'm going to give this transfer a 3.75 stars out of 5, which is not bad. I know we all want our players to go to Europe, but this might be Kate Cow's level right now. Transfer number 6 is another American in MLS that went to Liga Emekis, and his name is Brendan Vasquez. And Vasquez went from FC Cincinnati to Monterrey in Liga Emekis. Vasquez had a breakout season in MLS two seasons ago where the American striker scored 18 goals and had 8 assists in 33 matches. However, last season he seemed to have regressed. Even though FC Cincinnati seemed to do a little bit better last year, in 29 MLS matches he only scored 8 goals and got 2 assists. I personally thought that the next move for Brendan Vasquez would be go to the Eredivisie or maybe the English 2nd Division to continue to develop. But at the same time, he's already 25, so we have to beg the question. He's also a forward. How much more can he still improve? And can he still improve? And the answer to that is yes, he will still improve, but probably not a lot. Which means Vasquez going to where he'll make more money makes total sense. Monterey paid nearly $7 million for him in a salary that is probably much higher than any other offer he had in MLS or Europe. Vasquez had said it himself in the past that he wanted to challenge himself in Europe, so I can't really blame him for going for the money. He will also be under a lot of pressure in Mexico and playing a league that is a bit better than MLS, as I said in the Cape Cow section. So with all of that said, what is the rating that I give this transfer? And I'll give it a 3.25 stars out of 5 because unlike Kate Cow, I thought Vasquez could have done okay in Europe depending on where he landed. And Kate Cow is also much younger, so he can still develop in Liga Mekis and try to get a move in the future. Brendan Vasquez himself has said that he wanted to go to Europe, but he didn't do so. So to me, this is a 3.25 out of 5. It's not a terrible move but it's also not a great move. Transfer number seven is a quick one. It's Eaton Horvath to Cardiff City. They're a mid-table EFL championship team and Horvath wasn't gonna play for Nottingham Forest. He moves there on a full-on transfer till June of 2027. He needs to get minutes and he's gonna get minutes. So to me, this is a transfer that is a 4.5 out of five. I'm not gonna give it a five out of five because again, it's not like he's moving to a fantastic club in the Premier League to be a starter. He is regressing technically because he got promoted to Luton Town last season, but he's going to be a starter. He needs minutes as a goalkeeper. So to me, and it's also a stable team. Cardiff usually is not relegated in the EFL Championship as far as I know, I think. I don't know, time will tell, I guess. But I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5 for Horvath. He really needed this move. And now he will be a starter for his club, while Matt Turner will be riding the bench at Nottingham Forest. It's like Horvath and Turner sort of switched places at Nottingham Forest. Actually, not really, because Horvath was like the third option and Turner will be the second option. Next up, we have Nico Gioacchini that left St. Louis and went to the Italian second division to Como FC for 2 million euros. And I understand if anyone asks, why are you reporting on an MLS player that's heading to the Italian second division? And let me explain. Como is fighting for promotion. At the time of this recording, they're very close to the top three, only two points away from the promotion zone. So that could be that Joachini could be playing the Serie A next season. He is betting on himself in the team that he chose. I always appreciate a player that wants to challenge himself and he tried to make a career in France. That didn't work out well. So he went back to MLS to get his career back on track. It didn't go well with Orlando City, but then he had a good season with St. Louis. And instead of getting comfortable in MLS, he heads back to Europe for another challenge. He turns 24 and the mentality is there. He's definitely a guy to keep an eye on. I'm actively rooting for Nico Joachini. So I'm gonna rate this transfer a four out of five because this gamble might actually pay off just imagine if he helps them get promoted this will be a five out of five transfer five stars out of five right so i think it's a good move and i've said this multiple times i always appreciate a player that gets out of his comfort zone transfer number nine is duncan mcguire to blackburn in the EFL Championship, the second division of England. The former Orlando City forward leaves on a loan with a hefty fee plus a larger transfer fee than the previous one that he had 
offered by Blackburn, which was around $4 million based on previous reports. And this was reported by Tom Bogart himself. So it's higher than $4 million. That's what we know. I'm not sure on the numbers. What are the exact fees? I don't really think it matters. And honestly, I don't see Duncan McGuire with a U.S. men's national team future besides the Olympic team this year in 2024. I do, however, appreciate the fact that once again, he's challenging himself and not really he's once again challenging himself. But I've said this multiple times in the video that I appreciate a player that gets out of his comfort zone and is actively trying to get better. I'm going to rate this move for Duncan Maguire a 4 out of 5. He moves to a better league, in my opinion, challenges himself, and honestly, I think his playing style does suit the EFL Championship, and, you know, I'm not going to spend much more time on this transfer. That's it. Last but not least, we have transfer number 10, because we had that bundle package that was like three transfers at once, and that is Paxton Aronson. He leaves Eintracht Frankfurt on a loan to Vitesse in the Eredivisie. And this loan will go on till the end of this season. He was with Eintracht for 12 months and, you know, we were not seeing any progress in terms of his game and minutes. So this loan was very much needed. Now understand that Vitesse is not very good. They sit in last place in the Eredivisie. In other words, Vitesse sucks and Paxson Aronson will get plenty of minutes. They'll probably get relegated and then he will leave and go back to the Bundesliga. I'm gonna rate this transfer a 3.75 out of 5. It's not bad. He'll get minutes in a good league. It's just a terrible team, but he's not gonna stay there. So it's not a bad move by any means. He'll leave and go back to the Bundesliga with a lot more professional minutes under his belt, something that Pax and Aronson most certainly needs. Right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go and check out Underdog Fantasy. The link is on the description. And let me know in the comment section down below what do you rate each one of these transfers. I want to thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.